Clemens Homebrew coming at you with a beer review. Today's kind of an exciting one for me. This one comes to us from Chubby Mermaid Brewing. That's right, Chubby Mermaid Brewing. And uh, Chubby Mermaid are uh, some good friends that have gone pro. One is my nephew, Josh Hoover, uh, known as Man Bear Pig, 1122334455, or also known as Pier One Brewing. And also for Gary Fortin, who, um, was known for a long time as Main Brew Guy, and they're gonna be opening up soon out of Bonita Springs, Florida. So this is a pre-opening commercial beer review. That's right, they get the, the full commercial beer review. And this particular beer is their siren song, and you can see the, like the mermaid on there. It is a gluten-free, hazy IPA. Um, they are bona fide, they're moving that way. I, I look forward to seeing their doors open up. They're actually uh, independent craft brewery that are already members of the uh, Brewers Association. And the ingredients in this are great. It's 100% gluten-free. Ingredients include uh, millet, sorghum, buckwheat, oats, quinoa, to pronounce that correctly, water, yeast, and hops. I don't know what the hops are, but let's get into it. I wanted to get into this right away in part because uh, I heard uh, SJ, SJ Poor, if you know him, uh, did a review and he'd mentioned that sometimes these gluten frees don't hold up as well. Uh, they can oxidize a little more quickly and that travel from the east to west coast doesn't always do nice things. So this is in interesting, so it is indeed hazy. It's kind of a, I'm going to call it a dirty orange rather than a bright orange color. And uh, the head came up but it's fading a bit. Let's get the nose. Okay, wow. So right away, the nose, big time citrus coming off that. I'm getting uh, both uh, a big orange hit, and then I'm getting a grapefruit hit and a lot of like pithy uh, grapefruit, maybe a little grapefruit rind kind of quality in there. Oh yeah, the grapefruit is probably dominant of the two. And then I can't put my finger quite on it, but I'm getting like some hints of some other types of uh, tropicalness to it. So I'm not sure what kind of hops they use. I could take some wild guesses, but probably a mix thereof. But it's a really pleasant uh, aroma. And I am worried that the, the head faded only because that, that scares me that it might not have traveled well. We will see. We're going to jump right on in. Cheers. Yeah, Travel might have put just the most mild oxidation on it. It's not bad at all. Um, but it did something with the, the uh, carbonation on it, unfortunately. Uh, but again, the, the Travel's not kind to a lot of beers. But it did not hinder the aroma. And it did not hinder the taste whatsoever. <laughs> and to me... That's an extreme gift. So the carbonation is very low. Generally, you want it kind of low on hazies anyway. So, so that kind of fits the style somewhat. I think it could use just a little bit more. But the flavor on this is wonderful. It has a beautiful sweetness to it. I'm going to uh, uh, probably lean towards what uh, SJ had said. He felt like there was some honey t flavor to it. And my best guess is... Um, uh, there's the sorghum in there, which is going to bring a unique sweetness to it. But you know, I have no idea what type of sweetness you get between like millet, which is I think really the primary ingredient on it. Uh, but between that, the sorghum being number two, so you can definitely get your sweetness. And then you've got some buckwheat, which uh, can, it can bring some unique flavors for sure. Uh, and then oats and quinoa. I would have no idea what that would do in brewing, but it has brought out some really beautiful, sweet quality, which is something that you want to see in like a New England IPA or hazy IPA. Um, I'm going to look. Nope, it doesn't say what the IBUs or ABV is on this design. So I don't see that anywhere. If you guys know, put a comment on there. I'd love to find out. What is really good about this beer, and it's one of the things that uh, I know they've had conversations about, and I know I've talked to Josh about is in those warm warm climates and and you know it can be pretty warm down there in florida particularly in the summers but 
generally you go for a little bit lighter beers, a little lower ABV type beers, um, and more go more to the refreshing side is just what's intelligent to do. Not always as full flavor, although this has really kind of a medium body to it. Um, and I know that uh, some of the breweries that I really like, like uh, Baja Brewing down in Cabo, would make those lighter beers. And so this is, it's a, it's a hazy IPA. It has, it's, it has full flavor, but not as full of a body, which is probably really good for that market. I'll show you real quick. We've got down below, you've got Doug, who is patiently waiting for me, uh, hoping to, um, to get some uh, food his way. He likes sunflower seeds and he is behaving. He's not coming up on the deck. I've been teaching him. <laughs> well, this is a fun beer. The, I still say that the primary um, flavor that I'm getting is kind of a mix of citrus. I'm getting a bit of like a, a tangerine quality on this now as it's sap. Come to a thing, or I think SJ said the same thing. He got more orange, I got more of the grapefruit, but you're kind of getting a blend of multiple citrus qualities on there. Uh, I still lean towards the grapefruit being pretty strong on it for myself. Mm. It's a fun beer. As far as gluten-free, it's been a long time since I've had a gluten-free beer. But I gotta say, I think, and I can't imagine, because this coming off tap is gonna be so much better than it is after traveling cross country. And I'm, I'm liking this as it is. So I've gotta say, this will be a hit for people that want a gluten-free beer or need that. Um, uh, uh, and, and particularly like if you're bringing someone along, you know, that would drink a beer if they could, but that, you know, they have to go that direction. This is gonna be a winner. This is gonna be a really good beer. And not only that, I think the beautiful thing about this beer, it has such a good taste to it. This is, once people try this, if they do tasters of this, yeah, you should do some tasters. When people try this, they're gonna be people that are gonna be buying this beer even though they don't require gluten-free. I am, I am certain of it because I would totally go for this fresh on tap, absolutely. I still say that I'm, I'm getting a little bit of a, um, of some tropical quality on that. I can't really nail down what that tropical quality is it's kind of hard. It, it's one, one of those blended things, you know. It's like I feel like I get some starfruit type-ish quality on that. Um, almost like the smallest background hint of a guava on there too, which is very interesting. But uh, they've definitely put something like a galaxy or this, that, or the other. You know, something that could pull in some of those tropical qualities. Wow, so how do I rate this for a hazy IPA? Um, I'm going to, for the moment, I'm going to erase the aspect of the, um, of the carbonation being a little low because I know with travel and everything, on tap, that wouldn't be an issue. And, and it's there, it's just very, it's, it's just a little too light. So I'm not going to put that into my qualifier so much because everything else is just right there. It, it truly is. And those things, they'll have that all dialed in. Um, wow, in terms of flavor, the mouthfeel, and that's not even taking account the market that they're in, which this I think is well suited for their market. Um, this is in the 90s. Uh, absolutely, this is a commercial beer style. This is in the 90s. Uh, I would give this a 92 for a, for a hazy IPA. And that's just for all hazy IPAs, not for the fact that it's gluten free, in which case I don't know, I don't know how it would rate that. I would have to rate it very, very high with uh, gluten-free type aspect. Overall, I'm not changing much. It's just a well-crafted beer. And I have to say, I'm very delighted to be able to say that. Uh, makes me a little giddy, obviously. Uh, I'm gonna give this a 91 overall. It's just well-designed, well-crafted. I Hats off to both of you, both Gary and Josh. I mean, uh, uh, and, and whatever you've done in terms of your 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 grain bill, if you will, I mean, uh, being an interesting mix of stuff, I, I would just say, don't, yeah, don't change it. Don't change it. You know, I don't know how many batches you made before you got there, or if you just did your research and just hit it right, right away. I wouldn't change any of that. Um, 
as long as you get the right balance of carbonation again I don't know if travel played into that at all um, I, I think that you guys uh, have a winner you'll have to dial it in for your, your bigger system obviously but this is a one fantastic beer so here it is again it is the siren song gluten-free hazy IPA this is a pre-opening commercial beer review uh, but they'll be opening in the future I will let you know when they open uh, for sure that'll be on my channel and you'll probably hear it some other places off like homebrew Wednesdays and so forth uh, it is Chubby Murbay Brewing out of Bonita Springs, Florida. Look forward to their opening. This is Kevin Clemens Homebrew saying, life's too short to drink cheap beer. And I'll see you on the next beer review. Look down below. I will definitely have a link to their website. Cheers.